Arms are a body part that many people overcomplicate today. You'll see all kinds of fancy equipment, people coming up with all types of crazy angles for exercises, regurgitating fancy words, terms, and preaching biomechanics. Yet in my opinion, the average bodybuilder, whether a competitor or the average gym rat, their arm development is generally very underwhelming. And in many cases, you'll even see guys with decent physiques, but the arms are severely lacking in comparison. I attribute this to the overcomplication of training today. Gurus and influencers love to sell you on the next big secret to developing arms with their crazy exercises and techniques. Yet if we go back to the beginning, when guys only had access to a barbell and some dumbbells, they built massive arms. It wasn't uncommon for guys at 200 pounds to be sporting 18 to 19 inch arms back in the 60s and 70s in bodybuilding. And they did it with bare bones equipment. My arms have always been one of my most impressive body parts, stretching the measuring tape at over 19 inches fully pumped. But over the years, as I tried more modern and fancy ways to develop them, I always came up short in results. And it wasn't until I'd returned back to what I did originally coming up that I was able to continuously see progress. For me, it's always been about basic barbell and dumbbell movements for arms. With the exception of a tricep press down on a cable machine, literally every exercise for the biceps and triceps were done with free weights. And today, I still follow that practice. But as my arms are such a dominant muscle group for my physique personally, I train them with slightly less volume than the rest of my body. As my goal is to maintain them as I bring up the delts, the back, and the chest even more. My first two exercises on arm days are not about heavy weight. They're not about loading the muscle or creating a lot of muscle damage. The goal here is to pump as much blood into the muscle as possible. The goal is also to do this with the least amount of weight as possible. I do this by squeezing the biceps and triceps as hard as possible each and every rep. For the first exercise, I perform the easy bar curl on a very slight incline bench. This causes me to lean forward and focus on peak contraction of the biceps at the top of the movement. And I superset that with a bench dip for triceps. Neither exercise was performed to failure, but my goal is after three to four sets of each exercise for those muscle groups to be fully pumped, have the joints warm and ready to go for the heavy training that comes after. Pump training gets a bad rap today. Many people will call it junk volume or ineffective reps, but I can assure you that although pump training shouldn't be the only thing you focus on in the gym, getting a solid pump creates mind-muscle connection like nothing else you will ever do in the gym. And in my opinion, it's this lack of mind-muscle connection for most people that severely limits their growth. It's also the reason they feel they need to come up with such fancy movements to feel the arms working. But you can personally throw me on literally any exercise or machine in the gym and I could find a way to get a solid pump out of that movement because I've developed such a strong mind-muscle connection for arm training over the years that many of these variations that people come up with today are just completely unnecessary. And if you develop this for yourself, you'll find yourself saying, just get me to a barbell and dumbbells and I'll go to work. And that's what I do after these first two movements when I jump into heavy barbell curls. This is a movement where I'm focused on heavy loading of the biceps, and this would be considered a mass building movement for me. From here, it's not necessarily the strictest movement, but the reps will stay as tight as possible until reaching a heavy enough weight where the last few reps, some momentum is required to complete. However, I use this momentum to my advantage by then doing the opposite and slowly lowering the weight under control. At this point in the set, I'm mentally thinking to myself, lift the bar into position so that you can lower it under control as the negative is the most important part of the set for muscle building. My next movement and the first heavy mass building exercise for the triceps is the basic easy bar skull crusher. The thought process is very similar on this movement as my goal is to load the triceps as much as possible. And I can extend this set further, first by using a bit more pressing as a triceps fatigue and lowering the bar strictly to the forehead, focusing on the negative. But I'm also able to train the triceps even beyond failure by finishing the set with close grip presses. After these two movements, the biceps and the triceps are completely filled with blood and already extremely fatigued. There's a huge difference between the pump you get from light weights and the pump you get from heavy weights. When training lighter with higher reps, you will feel the arms puff up but it almost always feels hollow inside. And this pump also generally goes away fairly quickly. When you train the arms very heavy and you take those sets to or near failure for multiple sets, you will feel such a strong pump that the arms always feel completely dense. Now that density is all the blood pooling in the muscles. And this pump will generally stick around a lot longer. 
even up to 30 minutes to an hour after training. And you can call it all bro science if you want, but this is the type of pump that you wanna aim for if your goal is building muscle. But it's not just about heavy weights and pump training. If you're a bodybuilder, you wanna fully develop the physique, and that involves other muscle groups that are generally neglected by most. And I've taken the last few years to shift my arm training to areas of the biceps that are personally less developed than others. And for me, that's personally my brachialis and forearms. So I make it a point to include reverse curls or hammer curls in my training. But understand that neither of those are generally the best options if you're looking to strictly develop bicep mass. But if you need to develop those forearms and the brachialis, these should both be staples in your training. I personally perform these at the end of my arm training when the forearms are already slightly fatigued from gripping heavy barbells. And my focus is higher reps to get to the point that my forearms are very fatigued near the end of the set. And although I did a limited amount of exercises for the biceps, these three in this combination allows me to get the most out of training with the least amount of time. And my final exercise for the day is the overhead tricep extension. This exercise I use specifically to target the triceps in the stretched position. Many people will complain about this movement that is stressful on the elbows, which I do find to be the case if you jump into it completely cold. But not only do I first make it a point to do tricep dips to warm the elbows up, I also place this one exercise at the tail end of the session when there's so much blood in the arms and the joints are so lubricated from prior exercises that these generally feel great at this point in the session. And the major advantage of this movement here is training the triceps in that stretched position, which often isn't something that you're able to target with most tricep exercises. In my opinion, because of the deep stretch here and the ability to lift some heavy weights on this movement, you can really load up the triceps like no other exercise. The only drawback is if you place it first in your session, you have to be very careful of the elbow stress. And I found that from a longevity standpoint, these tend to work best if placed later in the session, even if that means sacrificing some loading on them. But as I always like to say, let results speak for themselves. And personally, I've always found it produce great strength and mass gain, even when done in a fatigued state at the end of the session. This entire workout session is very bare bones, as mentioned, but not even just based on equipment, but in sets, reps, and total volume. Yet for me, it's always been about executing these basic movements with 100% focus and forgetting about the weight on the bar or in my hands and focusing on the target muscle contracting as hard as possible, filling it with as much blood as possible and coming back and repeating that process over and over again. This is just what my current arm training looks like at the moment. But if you want more training information and want to follow the exact routines I personally use, as well as recommend for those looking to build more mass using proven old school bodybuilding training methods, I highly recommend you check out my five day old school mass gain training program in the description below. And as always, if you guys want to see more of the best original bodybuilding content just like this, make sure to hit subscribe.